What's up guys, I'm Shane and welcome to Audioholics. What we have here today is the world's first, that's right, the world's first 13.2 channel preamp processor by Marantz, the AV8805. If you're familiar with my personal channel, Spare Change, then you'll know the 8805 has been my daily driver for all my 4K movie reviews. So if you like reviews like this, be sure to stop by. Okay, so I've been living with both an Integra and Anthem Pre-Pro, which are both fantastic, alongside the 8805. Will the Marantz have what it takes to become my permanent fixture in my audio rack? Well, let's get it unboxed, set up, and I'll share with you some of my thoughts on the features and audio quality. Inside, we get the usual suspects. We have the power cord, Odyssey calibration mic, owner's manuals and warranty info, Wi-Fi antennas, FM and AM antennas, some handy cable labels, a very high quality cardboard microphone stand, the remote, and the batteries. The AV8805 is Marantz's flagship surround processor and is priced accordingly at $4,500. Removing it from the box, I found it had some good heft, coming in at 30.2 pounds. This weighs more than a lot of receivers with built-in amps, thanks to its huge power supply. Taking a look around the unit, on the front, you'll see the unmistakable curved front fascia with the knobs for input selection on the left and volume control to the right. Front and center is a porthole looking LED display. I know this may be a pain point for some folks since it's so small, but not to worry. Right underneath is a drop-down door with a full-size LED display. Here you'll have direct button access to various sound modes as well as power control over the two additional zones. The 8805 supports three independent zones. If you don't have a remote handy, there is a directional pad so you can change settings from the unit itself. Around back, there are seven HDMI HDCP 2.2 compliant inputs alongside three HDMI outputs with monitor one supporting EARC. There's also an additional HDMI input on the front. All eight HDMIs will also pass through HDR10, Dolby Vision, and HLG if your display supports it. For the audio files out there, on board is a pair of XLR inputs that are source assignable and a phono input. There are some home control connections here with an IR flasher output, remote control in out, two triggers, and an RS-232 connection. Or if you prefer, you can use Marantz's app to control the unit. It's in the iOS or Google Play Store. Just connect to your Wi-Fi network with the included antennas or hardwire it using the Ethernet port. There's also some legacy connections back here using composite and component inputs and outputs. As far as connecting to your power amps, you'll get options for both unbalanced and balanced pre-outs for up to 15.2 channels. However, the 8805 can only decode up to 13.2 channels at a given time. So why 15 channels then? Well, we'll go over that during the setup. And as mentioned before, the unit also supports up to two additional zones for a total of three. All right, let's get this hooked up in my theater and run through some of the setup options. Let's go and check out the speaker settings first. I know that's the main attraction here. The speaker amp assigned section is where you'll tell the preamp up to how many speakers you'll be using and where they're gonna be located. You'll get a few options under the assign mode. First one here is up to 13 channels. Under floor layout is where you'll specify how many lower channels you'll be running. You can choose front wides and surround backs for a total of nine lower channels, leaving you with four additional overheads to play with. If you're not doing wides, you'll have the standard 7.1 configuration, leaving six additional channels. If you don't have backs, you can just do wides, and as you can see, the graphic does change depending on what you choose. Under height speakers is where you'll determine how many overheads you've got. For my setup, I'll only be needing four. If you choose 5, you can see the Voice of God speaker pops up for all you Oro 3D users out there. It's pretty crazy, you can have up to 8 speakers over your head. If you're using those Atmos enabled bouncy speakers, this is where you can specify that you're using them. Under front and rear layout, just pick the correct location seen in the picture to the right. Another option you'll get is an 11.1 biamp setting. If you're running a 7.2.4 setup, you can select down below an unused preout to biamp your front channels. Or if you're running two sets of front channels, you can have that option too. You can of course have a ton of other options, but it takes like 20 minutes to go over them all. There should be an option for every kind of setup unless you have a huge room. 
Now there are pre-outs for up to 15 channels. If you've got speakers hooked up to all 15, only 13 can be active at once. So depending on the surround mode you choose, let's say Atmos, which doesn't support a Voice of God speaker or VOG, the speaker won't be active. If you switch over to Oro 3D, then that speaker would switch on while the other channels that Oro doesn't support would switch off. So instead of having to plug and unplug speakers manually, you can do it on the fly within the menus. Okay, let's back out of this and check out the other settings. I think if you're a Denon or Morantz owner, the rest of this will be all very familiar. Here's the speaker configuration. You could choose large or small or none. Speaker distance in 0.1 or 1 foot increments. Levels if you want to run the test tones to check speaker levels. For crossovers, you can do them independently or together. Here you'll tell it to run subs as LFE or together with the fronts and the sub crossover. We have some settings here for two channel playback. Let's go and check out the audio settings. You can adjust each sub level here. You can turn on or off the sub output. I'm of course gonna leave this on. Audio delay, that's an easy one. We have a few options here on how the volume behaves, which I think is kind of self-explanatory. Now we have some Odyssey settings. This does support Multi-Q XT32. Once you run the calibration, you'll get a few options. You can keep it off, use the reference preset, which will give you some rolled off highs, or you can bypass the front left and right, or use the flat setting. Here you have dynamic EQ and volume, and low frequency containment if you want to suck the bass right out of your soundtrack. This could be handy for some late night apartment viewing. If you're not using Odyssey, you can just adjust the EQ on your own using the 9 band EQ sliders. I'll be keeping this off, however. Let's go into the video settings now. I'm going to speed through some of these because I think some of them are pretty easy to figure out. We do get a vertical stretch mode here if you're using an anamorphic lens setup, which I think is a cool feature. If you have this connected to a TV, you may want to keep the HDMI control set to on. Doing this, you can use your TV remote to control the volume of the 8805. Now here, if you set this to off, you'll lose the on-screen display like volume level and extra info. So if you're wondering where the user interface went, just double check this and set it to on. If you're running multiple zones with video, you can specify which analog input is displayed in which zone in this section. Now if you've got an HDR display, Dolby Vision or just HDR10, be sure this is set to enhanced or else you won't be passing through HDR to your display. The rest of this is pretty self-explanatory, so just pause it if you need to see something. All right, let's talk about how it sounds. Well, as you may know, I'm a huge movie fan, so I did most of my listening with movie soundtracks. I listened to this with a few of my favorite movie scenes that I've watched a ton of times. The first clip being the opening chapter of A Quiet Place. I think this is a great scene to test how the processor handles the quiet atmospherics. And I think it did a standout job with recreating the gentle rustle of leaves, the very light tapping of footsteps inside the store, and the wind which blew distinctly throughout my room. I found the soundstage was spacious and recreated exactly what I was watching on screen. Now after I ran the Odyssey calibration, I did find a more open airiness nature within my home theater. The room seemed wider and more open. Those light footsteps now had more definition and I can now hear the sand move beneath their feet every time they took a step. Even the characters breathing also became more apparent and every shot had a little bit more nuance. Now moving over to a more bombastic and dynamic clip, the one that's always in my videos, it's the opening chapter of Power Rangers. 
The 8805 did a fantastic job of moving sound from the surround back speakers seamlessly overhead to the front channels. Bass response from both my SVS PB16 and PC4000 subwoofers handled those low end frequencies with authority and control. Again, switching back over to the Odyssey calibration, I did notice a greater sense of openness. I was able to make out more clearly the dirt and debris that was falling from above was now landing in specific parts of my room. The only issue that I've always had with Odyssey though is that typically after calibration, bass always seemed a few dB short, which really impacts the dynamics, especially during big action movies. Now I'm not gonna review how good or bad Odyssey is, but they do offer a very good app, which is in the iOS and Google Play Store. Using the app, it'll take you through the calibration process. You can measure up to eight positions, plus level match your subs. Odyssey recommends each additional position be no more than two feet from your first measurement. Once all the calibration is finished, you'll end up with a few options you can customize. First one is the speaker detection results. This will show how many speakers are hooked up with set distances and levels. If need be, just hit the edit button and you can make any changes. I always find levels are never perfect, so I always break out my Radio Shack sound meter just to be sure. Next one is room correction results. Here you'll get a before and after graph of each speaker and what Odyssey decided to change. Next up is target sound options with two options for high frequency roll offs. Here we have the mid range compensation, which introduces a notch at 2 kHz to tame high energy that can cause harshness, amongst other things. You can turn this on or off depending on speaker group. Here's the curve editor that will let you pick specific points to raise or lower. This is the worst part of the app. Trying to slide your finger to a specific frequency can be a huge task and seem impossible. Odyssey, if you're watching, you need to update this app ASAP. Frequency range is where you can limit at up to what frequency you want to have Odyssey applied to. You can do this to all speakers or specific groups. The subwoofer has correction up to 250 Hertz. And finally are the Odyssey settings, where you can set dynamic EQ, dynamic volume, and low frequency containment. Just know that this is a $20 app, and if you want to change these settings, you can only do it with the app. So after I boosted the bass level about 4 dB, I got to a place I was thoroughly satisfied with. I'm sure like myself, you may like your bass a little hot. I think you'll find the 8805 can reproduce every detail and subtlety in every movie you watch. It was able to place distinct sounds in their proper locations and track them incredibly well when they move around the soundstage. I didn't notice any harshness or muddiness, just a clean, precise sound. Dolby Atmos and DTS-X performance was stellar, and you do get all 3D out of the box with no additional upgrade fees. Okay, so this beast does just about anything you'd need it to. It supports all the immersive audio formats. Dolby Atmos, ETS-X, Oro 3D. And it's got all the major flavors of HDR covered with HDR10, Dolby Vision, HLG, as well as IMAX Enhanced. If you need this to be the central hub of your entire home, this will cover you up to two additional zones. If you don't want to hardwire for those other rooms and just want music in those locations, you have the Helios Wireless Multi-Room option or you can go ahead and use Apple's AirPlay 2. You wanna to talk to the 8805 like it's your best friend? If you've got an Amazon Echo, you can have it play music from your favorite streaming service and control playback. Alexa, turn off the TV. If you don't have an Amazon Echo, the unit will also support Google's Assistant as well as Apple's Siri. You like high-res music? This thing's got you covered. It can decode up to 24-bit 192K as well as DSD. Did I mention this has support for EARC? That's Enhanced Audio Return Channel. Well, if you've got this connected to a compatible television, you can stream lossless Atmos from your TV's inbuilt apps like Netflix or Vudu. Over standard ARC, you'll get the lossy compressed version, so it's got to be enhanced. And the word is the 8805 should be upgradable to HDMI 2.1 whenever there's hardware available. You'll have to send it in, of course, and swap out some parts so that there may be an additional fee. So amazing sound and an amazing feature set. There's only a few processors out there that can decode more channels, but they cost almost triple the price of the Marantz, and in some cases, a lot more. The 8805 seems as future ready as you can be for now, and if you're feeling that upgrade-itis, I can't think of another processor available at this price point that's gonna beat it. Well, that's all I've got for now. Hit the like button if you found the video helpful, and let us know if you've got one of these in your setup. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, keep listening.